When we initially teased the game in 2014 at BlizzCon with the museum cinematic, um, it was a it was a nervous day for us because it was the first time that we did, we were able to show some of the stuff that we've been working on for years and years, and we were nervous. We were nervous that the community was gonna wasn't gonna be totally into it. We were nervous that the uh, that the the hardcore Blizzard fans wouldn't feel like it fit into the overall Blizzard collection. But the second that the Overwatch cinematic was done, the tone was very different for us. We could tell that there, that something had shifted and people were really connecting with the game. So much so that what the crazy part is that 24 hours later, less than 24 hours later, we were already seeing Overwatch cosplay at BlizzCon, something that they had never seen this game before until 24 hours earlier, and we were already seeing them connect with the game in a way that they wanted to sort of um, embody the characters. It was great. And then fast forward to two years later, we, we were doing the beta, right? We were getting ready to do our big beta launch, and it was another situation where we were very nervous. This was the first time people were gonna actually get some hands-on time with the game, first time they were gonna actually get to play it, and it was another nervous situation. We didn't know if it was gonna be the right fit for first-person shooter fans. We didn't know if, um, if the, it was the characters that people were connecting to or if there was, it was the game itself. So it was this nervous day, but the second that the game hit the internet, um, everything changed again. The, the community accepted it, the community embraced it, everybody was very, very, very into it, and we saw crazy amounts of fan art and cosplay, and we knew that there was this cool connection happening. Then, um, a year ago this week, we launched Overwatch for the first time. We actually hit, yeah. So when we hit the big red button to launch Overwatch into the world, it was the same thing, right? It was Nervousness, terrifying. so scary. <laughs> um, we didn't know if the servers were going to start on fire. We didn't know if the uh, the community, the larger community outside of sort of the Blizzard hardcore fans, we didn't know if those guys were going to be as into it as um, we had seen up until then. So it was that nervousness again. But once again, the second that we hit that big red button, everything changed for us. The the internet accepted it and embraced it and they loved it. There was crazy amounts of enthusiasm, um, crazy cosplay, crazy fan art. So much so that in the past year, the I think uh, Jeff Kaplan has said this multiple times, um, If you, once the game was released, it sort of wasn't our game anymore. It belonged to the community um, and we were sort of curating it as much as possible. But the way that the community has sort of inspired us to keep making the game better and to keep um, to keep doing cool content and um, inspiring us to do better, be keep making the game better and better and better. It's uh, It's been a cool, cool, cool journey. So we wanted to talk th about that a little bit. How about, y how about how you guys have had played such a role in the game, and um, it's been a, a cool year, and we wanted to sort of highlight you guys as much as possible. So I think the best example of that is our old friend, Diva. All right, so Diva, we got some Diva fans out there, awesome. Uh, so Diva, when we were, she was kind of at the end of our, our final first 21 heroes, and when we got to making her, uh, she was like a personification of ourselves. She's like totally determined. She's a gamer. Uh, she's patriotic. She, she was really kind of a more of a serious character, honestly, uh, when we were creating her. Um, she embodies all of this female empowerment and just totally kicks ass. And that was the character that we were creating uh, as we were making D.Va. And then we handed it over to the public. So that's when things got a little weird. Because um, you guys <laughs> took D.Va and did something totally different with her, right? Like, we could have never sat in a meeting beforehand and, and had this question come up, like, what, hey, guys, do you think we should uh, prepare some sort of response if they turn D.Va into a gremlin who eats Doritos and drinks Mountain Dew? That was never, never a conversation. No idea. <laughs> but we loved it so much. We thought it was such a cool way that you guys took the character and brought it into your world. So it was in your hands, right? It was your creation at this point. And we loved it so much that we brought it back into the game. 
making making these animations and these uh, sprays were it was natural for us as soon as we saw what the community was doing with diva obvious we had to how could we not put this in the game it's so awesome but that wasn't the only character obviously that 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 this has happened with so yeah soldier 76 let, let me tell you a little bit about the origins of soldier 76 this is a character that chris metzen dreamed up I don't know, probably a couple decades ago, honestly, making uh, comic books on his own. It's this gruff, tough, you know, soldier guy, the commander of Overwatch, total leader, badass guy, very serious, very uh, focused, determined personality. And uh, once again, we handed it over to the community. And you guys did something weird. So you guys turned them into... A sort of almost reluctant father figure who was a little bit worn out by all of his uh, crazy kids who were other Overwatch characters, and we loved it so much. This is a, this is another example, right? We, you guys, took this character, this rough and tumble soldier man, and you turned him into a dad in a way that everybody could uh, kind of relate to, right? And yeah. we loved it so much that we put it back into the game. We had, we had to do these. I think there's a, an emote where he's um, doing golf, too. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Overwatch launched a year ago this week, and um, we knew we weren't done making our roster of characters, so we chose the next obvious step and made a Grandma Sniper. Uh, yeah, we uh, we had this chance to explore a character type that you don't really see in first-person shooters very often. She's an older woman. She is a sniper. Uh, she's a mother. Um, it was it was really kind of an interesting experience making this character. We had no idea how people were gonna relate to that. I think there's no precedent for elderly sniper. That I, like I don't I don't know that that's a that's an archetype I've seen very often. So when we handed it over to the community. We didn't, we didn't know what you were going to do with it. And this was an example of you guys not, you guys didn't turn her into a weird gremlin lady. You, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you really embraced the grandma side of her, right? You t and that, the healer side and the protector side, and you turned her into this caregiver figure. Oh, she's a badass sniper. Let's not forget that. But she's also a lady who gives out, you can see in this, uh, the, the emote that we have, she drinks tea. Um, she hands out candy on Halloween. Like, you really, you really embraced Anna and turned her into Nana, and that was something that we really appreciate. So fast forward a little further, and we have the Woo! Summer Games event. Did you guys, did you guys play a little Lucio ball? Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. So uh, Summer Games was our chance to like try things a little bit different, just embrace the athletic side of uh, things. It was, I don't know, it was super fun. But um, beyond that, it also gave us a chance to try a different game mode. I mean, our, our game is, it was strictly PvP at that point. So we were like, well, okay, well, we're inspired. We, why don't we try something else? Let's play a little Lucio ball. Throw three Lucios versus three Lucios. Put a soccer ball in the middle and see what happens. And you guys seem to like it. <laughs> And this is, a, this is another situation where you guys took it and you really found the spirit of it, right? Like it was, an, it was an outdoor event, it was about athleticism, it was about bright colors and fun and sports, right? And you guys found the center of it and you really embraced it and made it your own again. And so we saw crazy amounts of fan art, we saw cool cosplay come out of it, we saw um, all this acceptance and excitement that um, every, it's, going back to the, what I was talking about originally, this is every single time we push the button and release something, it's the same thing over and over again. And every single time, you guys find a way to re-inspire us to make this cool content. Halloween terror. <laughs> this, uh, this was another shocker for us. On the development side, we, um, we had a pretty pretty tight timeline to make this thing and pull, pull it together. Um, but this was our first chance to see what PvE might look like in Overwatch. It's been player versus player the whole time, and then when we got to this, we're like, all right, well, let's shoot up some om Omnics, uh, see how it goes, tell a little story. Uh, it was a really fun event for us, a little tongue-in-cheek, and uh, you guys really embraced it. 
completely. So this was one of the, uh, this was, we saw some really cool fan art come out of this. Um, you guys embraced the, the sort of alternate universe storytelling that we were doing with the um, Junkenstein's Revenge uh, brawl. And we saw this cool molding of different memes that had come up already. So Dad76, right, makes a comeback, because obviously he's got to take his uh, gremlin child on a trick-or-treating mission and run into another dad who has another screaming child. Um, and we saw tons and tons and tons of this stuff. We saw crazy dark and terrifying um, fan art come out of it. We saw all new different styles that we hadn't seen before. So you guys really took this event and made it your own once again. <laughs> so this this character, this particular character, uh, Sombra was a character that we knew even before the game launched that we wanted to get into the game. Um, I don't know if you guys remember or not, but there were papers around uh, the Anubis Temple of Anubis map that had you know, the, I think they just had the name Sombra on it. Everybody thought it was Anna, but we fooled you. <laughs> uh, it wasn't Anna, it was Sombra, and this, another, I just have to share with you guys, another cool development story on her, um, between her and Genji, actually, we tried, I don't know, three or four different types of stealth, try to make stealth work in our game, and it just, it wasn't working, it wasn't working on Genji, so we scrapped it, and when Sombra came up, we had a chance to try it again and try to make it work, so, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed how that turned out. It was it took a lot of iteration, but I think it was worth it. The the cool thing, so we'll be the first to admit that our ARG didn't go exactly as planned. Um, but the the cool thing that came out of it is that we actually got to um, mold Sombra a little bit in the way that the community reacted to that ARG, right? So we saw you guys um, deciphering codes and figuring out, like going down avenues of the ARG and trying to solve it. And not all of them went anywhere, but it turned into a cool situation where it influenced the character herself. So this is the infamous Sky Code. If you followed the ARG, um, it was an avenue that the ARG solvers were um, trying to find, but it ended up not being the correct solution. But it became sort of a, a cool moment that um, we rolled back into some herself. Yeah. <laughs> Boop. Okay. So uh, right on the tails of Sombra, uh, we have Winter Wonderland, which, so as a community, you guys really like to speculate about our characters and write stories about our characters. <laughs> uh, this was our chance to kind of get a little more personal with our characters and show more of who they are and why they do what they do and their, their relationships and really um, embrace the spirit of the holidays, I guess. Um, oh, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> I'm not doing uh, my job. <laughs> do your job. Uh, so the Reflections comic uh, was a chance for us to really dig in, show what the characters are about, uh, confirm, deny, all sorts of stuff. It was, it was a really great experience sharing this with the community and the acceptance throughout the community of these stories that we were embracing and telling was, it was beautiful. Um, so I, one of the things that we did um, on the community team when we were working on the, the Winter Wonderland event was we asked for the community to help us decorate our tree, the office tree, and we got boxes and boxes and boxes of unique pieces of art and Christmas cards and ornaments and things that we could have never imagined. Um, they were so cool. And it was, a, it was this cool moment for us where we sort of felt like you were bringing Overwatch and you were bringing us into your holiday celebrations. And we, of course we decorated our tree with all of them. And we put out a little video about it and we wanted to celebrate as much as we can. And we saw these, we saw these pieces of fan art, right, that were Christmas cards where we saw, we saw people on Twitter sending them to each other. And we saw everybody sort of participating in this little, this little community of celebration, just, to, just surrounding Overwatch. And it was really, really cool and inspiring. 
So, uh, yeah, Lu Lunar New Year. Uh, this one, this was a really interesting event for us to create. We're an American company, and this is not an American holiday, but we, we really tried to embrace it and show the fun, the giving, all the spirit of it uh, as best we could. Um, this is a this is a this, a holiday that um, I had never actually sort of celebrated. So this was a cool way for a cool introduction for me specifically. Um, anybody who celebrated Lunar New Year knows that it's about sort of giving and being around family and um, being a part of that family. And we felt that again right on the tails of Winter Wonderland. Right, we felt like you guys were. Um, being generous and, and giving and uh, just wanted us to be a part of that celebration. And that was, uh, that was crazy. It, was, it, it made me and the rest of the team I know feel, uh, feel like we were part of your community, not that you were part of us, our community. And that was really wonderful. Absolutely. Um, so come, come to our next character, Arissa. This was this was another interesting development process for us. So we had we had no idea what she was going to look like. We had no clue whatsoever. All we knew was that we needed another tank. We needed somebody to jump in there and fill roles that were missing. So she was born as the anchor tank. We didn't know what she looked like. We didn't know how she was going to connect into the story until we made the character Efi, which is her creator. So we have this little genius girl that takes robots apart and makes them and then Arissa was born out of that. So we, when we um, started sort of teasing Arissa, this was one of the things that we posted on the internet. And the crazy part about this is that you guys are so smart and talented that you started putting things together way before we showed what she looked like. So we saw, we teased this shopping list that Efi put together with her uh, components that she wanted to build Arissa with. And this was a piece of fan art. Let me remind you, this came out before we had ever shown Arissa to anyone. So pretty close. Awesome they took job. that they took that shop. Yeah, applause. Let's do that. <laughs> it's awesome. It's crazy. Um, they put all, took all the components and sort of put them into what they th their vision for the character, and it matched very, very closely to what Arissa eventually became. The cool thing also from a community perspective is that this is one of the times where we got to work with a community um, artist and actually build lore. So one of our community artists sat down with one of our writers, Michael Chu, and wrote this comic, and we got to let our community be involved in the actual creation of lore. So it was uh, one of the cool inspirational circles that, um, that you guys have really inspired. All right. So uh, a few of you played uh, <laughs> Uprising, yeah? Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, Uprising was a really interesting opportunity for us. We got to go back into the story of Overwatch and kind of show the beginnings. You're going on Tracer's first mission. You're under the command of Jack Morrison, who would later become Soldier 76, and really digging in deep into the story. And it was a little bit, uh, a little bit darker tone for us. It was uh, really, really cool to try out and stretch our legs a little more with PVE and what it could be and what it's, you know, how, how you can play our characters in a PVE experience. One of the cool things about this from a community perspective and from just watching what the, the community has done with our, our characters is that the, you guys have this incredible, um, connection with the game in a way that allows you to sort of get to the core of it, right? And you guys uh, sort of embrace the darker, uh, sort of mysterious, lore-ish side of the Uprising event, and you turned it into this fan art that was, that matched it in tone, right? It was, uh, the previous events, a lot of them had been sort of more upbeat and silly, but not this one. This was more dark, and you guys found that, and we saw some very, very different kinds of pieces come out of it, um, and it was, uh, it was, it was amazing. So hold on, guys. Um, so it's been, it's the one year anniversary, right? 
um, right? One year. Um, we Get just it. had the one here. We just uh, had our, started our anniversary event. So one of the things that we wanted to show you is this uh, is our kickoff video for the anniversary. This is something that we are the anniversary of Overwatch for us is a very big deal, and we want you guys to celebrate it with us. So um, I'm going to show this video, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Anyone want to join me? Adios. Cease your resistance. So that if that event has only been live for a few days. We just released that on Tuesday, and we're already seeing fan art from it and cosplay. And you guys are the most incredible community. The way that you guys turn this stuff around and you're connected to it, and um, this is like the very fact that you that the second that we put anything new out, you guys embrace it and love it, and. Um, and want to be a part of it. It's uh, it's an incredible experience for us. And the, let me. I'm gonna. We're gonna talk a little bit about one of those things right now. One more. All right. So uh, this character recently in a comic that we put out with Uprising uh, made a little gesture that you guys seem to really like. So. So of course we had to put it in the game. We had no idea you guys were gonna jump onto. Uh? This is one of those situations, right, where we could never have ex have expected you guys to latch onto one frame of the comic so much and turn it into such a big deal that we just wanted to put it back in the game. So with the anniversary, um, you can now make Reaper shrug. <laughs> So this has been a big year for us. This is uh, this has been one of the most. I, I, I think it's for Overwatch. It's definitely the most incredible twelve months that we could have ever expected. And um, this is, over thirty million of you guys have logged in and and played and been a part of this community. And we seriously couldn't ask for a better community. This I think I speak for everyone at Blizzard when I say. Thank you so, so much for being so, so cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So let me ask you this. Who here is in Overwatch cosplay? Let's stand up. Go. Yeah. So these are the guys that are making the community so cool and so fun to be a part of. You guys These are, the, are the people that are inspiring us and making us just want to be a part of the Overwatch community. So thanks, let's give them a huge round of applause. Go. Um, also, if you guys haven't had a chance to play Overwatch, it is currently, as of a few hours ago, very, very free to play for this weekend, so. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So we wanted to give you guys a chance to ask us some questions. Um, so we are going to open it up to you guys. I see people are already in sprinting mode. I think yeah, there's I think a mic. There's a We're, mic in the middle, I think. I was what? told there would be a mic. Uh-oh, guys. Oh, uh-oh. I see reaper shrugs <laughs> happening all over the audience. 
Help! You can yell really loud. I, don't, I, don't know. I see someone running. If someone wants to come up here onto the stage and ask a question, <laughs> we can do that. Let's do one at a time. All right. <laughs> Hi there. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hey. So I come Wait, hold on. Can I? How do I? I love that we're lining up right here. I have here. A mic here. So. I, uh, what got me big into video games was League of Legends. Um, a lot of the skins in League have effects particles. That jump took it out of me, sorry. You got it, it's good. They have effect particles for a lot of the different skins, and I've been dying to see Genji's dragon change colors. And oh. I loved um, Chilled Reaper, his little cape. It made me like the character. It's the only skin I'll ever use with him. So is there any plans to make skins a little bit bigger like that in the future, or is it like too big of a... Um, is it too big of a time consumer to put into a skin? So his question is, uh, he's wondering if we have any plans to sort of uh, change the effects and uh, for the characters. Am I reading that yeah, correctly? Yeah, yeah, that, okay. that was the question. So um, the answer to that is sometimes we do. You may have seen May's uh, ice block go into a, a snowman during the winter holiday stuff. Um, we do on occasion do that stuff, but there's a big reason why we don't do it very often. Uh, in a first-person shooter, you have to be able to read the gameplay incredibly quickly, know exactly what's happening at any given moment. So when we go changing the big effects uh, quickly or uh, frequently like that, it's harder for people to catch on to what's happening. So it's not something that we're going to be doing uh, a whole lot, but yeah, every once in a while we'll sprinkle in something when we can. Okay, I'm going to bring my mic down here, and we'll have All a right. chat. I don't, I don't know how to. All right, you get, let's, what, what's All right. your question? We did it, we did it. Uh, my question is, like, what's the best part about your job? What's your favorite part about doing your job? Oh, man, you wanna go first? Yeah, I, I don't know, can we come down there? Is that like? Yes, I don't, probably. Yeah, I, I, they, walk, I mean, I don't we know. have Seems mics, <laughs> they're not sure. gonna stop us. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> what? So the question was, what is yeah. the best part about doing our, what, the best part of our jobs? Oh man, okay, so for me, the best part of my job is when we come up with a new character and they go, okay, we think we kinda know what we want, Arissa, we want her to have this like, suck in thing, what is that gonna look like? I have no idea, let's figure it out. So all of that creation process is my favorite part. Um, so uh, you probably can easily guess what the best part of my job is. You guys make my job, the community, the Overwatch community makes my job so, so easy. You have it so <laughs> um, easy. I don't have to put out fires and I don't have to sort of um, quell uprisings or anything like that. You guys make it super easy. Everybody is, for the most part, very, very cool. And um, it's, it's very, very nice to be able to just be a part of what you guys are doing. Cool. Thank you. Um, I'll understand if there's like an ND or a NDA that prevents you from answering this question. Sure. But just in case there isn't, I want to ask it anyway. Um, are any of the holiday events going to come back so that we have another chance to earn like the skins or get the achievements, stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think that there are. I think that we do have plans to help you guys out there. I'm not gonna give you too much information, but um, I think that if you go and search the Blizzard forums, Jeff Kaplan has already mentioned this before. <laughs> so. Look for those blue posts. Thank you. I don't really have a good question, so. You don't have a good question? <laughs> you got All right. this. What's your not good question? Wait for it. Okay. Do you guys have favorite dance emotes and can you do it now? Oh, you want me to do a dance? Oh, that is a bad sure. idea. <laughs> I do have favorite dance emotes, but I will not be doing it now because I value I got one, I got one, you guys ready? Yes! That's my favorite too. <laughs> Thank you. Is that one working? Let's see if that's working. Nope, all right. I got you. <laughs> 
All right, so I have a very simple question. When are you going to nerf Symmetra? <laughs> First you want her buff, now you want her nerfed. <laughs> are you gonna do this one? We love Symmetra, and we want her to be exactly the right place for the community. So the answer to your question is, who knows? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm asking, um, I know she's one of the newer characters, but I got to ask for my homegirl, Sombra. Is she, are we going to see a legendary for her anytime in the future, anytime in the new year? Woo! Can't give any specifics on that, unfortunately, but uh, we're constantly creating stuff for our characters and developing the lineup and uh, keep, keep watching. Thanks. We trying out a new mic? Oh, oh yes! We have it, Woo! yay, woo! Hi. What is your favorite skin for both of you guys? Um, so I really like Widowmaker's, like, my homegirl. Love me some Widowmaker. Her, <laughs> her, uh, her ballet skins, both of them. That's, yeah! Yeah. So my favorite skin is the Frostbite Fera skin. Yeah! Yes. All right, thank you. Hi there. All right, so my question, uh, based on how uh, particle effects and how beautiful Overwatch's particle effects are, and my favorite character is Zarya, with has beautiful particle effects. Conceptually, like design to like implementation, what's what's the whole process there as far as like designing in them and then putting them into the game for so, any character? Uh, okay, quickly on that one, I guess, because yeah. it's a it's several month process. Mm -hmm. um, some actually, each character is a little bit different. Sometimes we have concept art where they're like, okay, we know exactly what we want all the effects to look like, and sometimes they just go, I don't know, an AOE, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, with Zarya in particular. Um, a, Nick Everly did that one, I didn't do that one, but um, he had a lot of fun really trying out a whole bunch of different things. Her laser beam was kind of difficult to see where you're aiming and stuff, and we did a lot of iteration on it. it honestly, at Blizzard, it's, it's all about iteration and finding the right answer and trying things and failing and being awesome at it later. That's like the whole thing. So that's, it's mostly trying, failing, and then trying again. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, will there be a way for people to get the Hero of the Storm skins who have crap PCs and can't play Heroes of the Storm? <laughs> so the, the only way to, to, right now the only way to get the Heroes of the Storm skins is to participate in the Nexus Challenge, which unfortunately is no longer with us. So um, with that, that may be something that we revisit in the future, but for now that is the, that is the only way. Does that make you sad? Yes, it does. I'm I sorry. need Officer Tifa. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rip me. <laughs> All right, so this might be another NDA-sensitive question. Cool. But... These are my favorite. Yeah, these are the best. <laughs> so we've had two PvE events so far, and they have been freaking awesome. Uh, Thank you. Overwatch Uprising, in particular, was amazing. So are there any plans to have any permanent PvE modes in the game? So as far as a permanent PvE, we've got nothing to really talk about today, but we're constantly trying new things. Like I said, these events are chances for us to try out new stuff and see how it goes, see how the community reacts to them. So we'll see in the future. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I just have one question. When are you finally going to release uh, Doomfist? Are you talking about that guy that I've heard he can flatten a skyscraper? Yeah. Yeah. That guy sounds cool. He does sound, Just, yeah. sounds super cool. Oh. Tried, I tried. <laughs> you tried. Good, good try. <laughs> Which character do you think is the most fun to play as? Oh. <laughs> uh, I've got like a roster of about 10 that I switch through on like any daily basis play. I don't know if I can pinpoint to any one that I think is most fun to play. Symmetra. <laughs> <laughs> Nerf Symmetra. Oh no! And Zenyatta. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say what was your favorite like Overwatch meme or like fan art that you've seen? Say that one more time. 
Uh, your favorite Overwatch meme or like fan art that you've seen? Oh, favorite Overwatch meme or fan, fan art. That is, uh, that's like asking me to pick a favorite child. Um, yeah, so pick one. <laughs> <laughs> So there's so many of them that I like. The, the stuff that comes out of, um, the stuff that we see instantaneously, like right after we get an event going, those are, those are the ones that feel the most incredible for me because people are so engaged and they love it so much. Um, I love um, Zenyatta fan art personally, so <laughs> whenever I see it, I want it. <laughs> Um, and we do, so we've done, I don't know if you guys saw, a couple days ago we were doing a, um, we were doing a autoresponder on Twitter where we sort of sent out fan art to everybody. Um, and I love those things so much, those cutesy little pieces of fan art that we, ha um, that we work with some of our community artists for. Those things are amazing. Yeah. Hi, are there any heroes you were expecting to get more popular than they did, or heroes that you were not expecting to become as much of a phenomenon as they ended up doing? Um, I, think, I think Anna was really risky for us, honestly. Putting her out there, like I talked about a little bit earlier, we got grandma sniper chick. We had no <laughs> idea how that was gonna go, and immediately we saw, even on the gameplay side, in the competitive scene, People latched onto her immediately, and people loved her aesthetics. So she was a, a real surprise for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I was just wondering, like, what's a really good way to be able to get involved with like making video games, especially from like a concept art point of view? I know you guys have internships and stuff, but like, is yeah. there a better way to like kind of reach out there and see what you can do? Um, there are hundreds of thousands of. YouTube tutorials on how to make games, uh, especially like concept. You've got to really tr draw every single yeah. day. Like I know I'm sure you've heard that a hundred times, but it's so true. Like even our concept <laughs> artists now, they draw a day at work, they go home and draw some more. That's that's honestly how to do it. Um, as far as like actually company wide stuff, I'm personally a product of our um, internship program. I went to internships and ended up. It's been seven years now, uh, so it, it works out, I guess. Just okay. try really hard. Any opportunity you find, take it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Good luck. Hi. Um, is there a way that you guys can change the current MMR system in a matchmaking you ratio? You want us to change it? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. We sh I think we can, but the question is whether we should. <laughs> I think so. I really think so, because um, you know, basically, if you lose matches in quick play due to having two snipers on your team, you know, it kind of carries over to the competitive match, especially if qualifying for uh, for competitive, the, t the 10 qualification matches. You could win seven and still go back to gold, you know? So it's like a no-hope situation. Yeah, I, it, it, I think that there, I mean, so our, one, of our, um, one of our developers, um, who you can he posts a lot on the forums about the way that the, the skill rating system works. Uh, Scott Mercer, he he's always tweaking and tuning that thing and trying to get it just perfect. So I I know that it's never going to be 100% um, uh, the best experience for everyone all the time. Yeah. But we are always trying to go for 100% best experience all the time. So yeah. we're just going to keep on tuning it until it is a okay. I got you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks. Hello. Hello. First off, shout out to all you McCree mates. <laughs> yeah. And also, I'm a huge fan of esports, and I gotta ask, is there any information you can give about the Overwatch League? Uh, I can give you information about contenders, which we just which we just talked about. So we we just sort of launched the contenders um, league, which is like kind of like a minor league for Overwatch players. And as the as that system sort of plays itself out, those people who do very well in that will um, most likely end up in the Overwatch league. I think that's the plan. Uh, but. As far as like actual news items for the Overwatch League, we don't have anything to share just yet. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm terrible at first-person shooters, and no, it's not just because I because Genji is my favorite character. <laughs> Genji. Um, wrong with Genji. But I must Genji. say that Overwatch is easily the best one I've ever played. Good job. Thank you. Well, thank you. But anyway, my question is. Um, 
I often hear that the PC version of Overwatch is considered the best version because of the accuracy you can get with the keyboard and mouse. But I can't play that version, so my question is, will Overwatch ever be ported to Mac so I can finally play it? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. I know we're always looking into that stuff. I don't think we have anything to talk about um, any t like right now. But it, I think we're always looking for new ways to reach new fans to have them be a part of the community. Um, but right now, I think that we're we're sort of still working on the the versions that we have. So we're still concentrating on PC and uh, PS4 and Xbox One. Please add split screen so I can play with my brother. <laughs> We'll take that suggestion back. Thanks. Thank you. So I have two quick questions. One, when are you actually for real going to nerf Bastion? Oh, sounds like some controversy here. <laughs> oh, there's some Bastion fans in here. <laughs> Don't hurt him. <laughs> So we have a lot of we have a lot of characters that are super good at countering Bastion. You could try exactly. like a Widowmaker or someone like that. Put a tracer back there. Yeah, so there's lots of good counters. Yeah. <laughs> and second, I don't know if this is gonna be a very touchy question, but it probably did, will be. Did you <laughs> did did you inspire some ideas from Team Fortress 2? Sure, yeah, I, I got that one. Uh, we're, we're gamers, we're nerds, we're constantly playing video games. We work on video games at, at work, and then we go home and play some more. So yeah, we're constantly inspired by all sorts of games. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Hey, how you doing? No, I think everyone has kind of like a general grasp of like the backstory and you know how Overwatch came to be where it is today. But our, my main question is, could we see like an animated, I guess, feature film of that? Of like the. Uh, I would love to see that too. The main that piece is just beautiful. like the, the the fall of Overwatch, like the the final showdown between the two factions. I'd love to see that. We would also love to see that. Yeah, so no, no plans <laughs> at this time to announce, unfortunately, but that is, I don't know, we're constantly looking for ways to expand the universe and reach new, new consumers on this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know if this is non-disclosure as well, but um, obviously with the years past, you have had multiple events, seasonal events. Do you plan on adding more events, or do you plan on just potentially updating previous events to accommodate for new characters like Sombra or Anna or Orissa? I think this is one of those wait and see types of situations. So we, um, we are excited about the stuff that we have coming up, um, but we can't really tip our hat quite yet, so. No details. We're, we're excited to show what we've got for you. All right, thank you. All right, first of all, I'm, Hey, uh, I'm a longtime fan. I uh, never played the game, but I've been watching streams and everything. Plus, I'm a bit of a lore buff, and I've been one, and I sort of have an idea of how uh, Anna really ended when I got from shop by Widowmaker to hospital. And it involves a, a new hero. I've been working on this guy for like uh, five months. And he's, uh, let's just say he's part Batman, part Aine from, uh, from Avatar. Nice, he sounds, and, sounds awesome. And, well, uh, he has, his gameplay is pretty complex because he doesn't kill or use any weapons. In fact, he uses uh, modified gauntlets that launch uh, compressed air that can, in one punch, can uh, send in, like uh, an average size character like 30 
Yard. That sounds awesome. So we love it when the community sort of has their own ideas for heroes and own ideas for how the lore is going to develop and all of that stuff. This is this is part of what makes our community really special is that they invest so hard in every single element of Overwatch, so much so that they want to be part of the creation process. And we love that. So I am, it sounds very cool and we love what you're doing. Uh-huh. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, keep it up. And uh, last of all, Sombrad is sort of my video game crush. He had me at Apagando. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks, man. I don't get it. <laughs> <sighs> I'm, I'm incredibly nervous. All right. So we're all big fans of the game. We all have different perspectives on why this game is amazing. So, but. I've never heard from a developer why a certain game is amazing, so I'm asking the both of you, why is Overwatch so popular? Is, is this the cop-out answer? You guys. Yeah. <laughs> that is the real answer. That's not, a, I mean, that, that sounds like a cop-out yeah. answer, but that is the real answer. Um, the way that the community has embraced this game and it, the, the way that the community sort of polices itself when bad behavior happens um, and how we don't have to go around and just do bands and like try to try to weed out the bad eggs the, the community does that to itself and in a lot of ways I think that is because of the how the game itself is uh, it, like is all about optimism right we, we're l working for a better future and we want to try and um, remain optimistic and happy etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and so I think that like the type of players that have really connected with our games are with this game are the the type of people that we love playing games with. And I think that that is the, 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 the truth. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, first, I wanted to say that I love your jacket. And I saw a picture of oh, Jeff Kaplan you. wearing one. And I wanted to know if it was like a team exclusive or. This is, I don't know if we're out, but I bought it on the gear store. I oh, used did? my own money to oh, purchase cool. it on, on gear.blizzard.com, yes. OK. And I wanted to ask if, like, I mean, Overwatch is well known for being so like inclusive of like many different types of people. And I wanted to know, like, what really inspired you guys to do that? And were you nervous at all putting out a game so diverse? Um, so this, like, our characters are the center of our game, right? And we wanted, when we set out to make this game, we weren't looking to make a statement or anything. We were just looking to make a global cast. We were looking all over the world for inspiration, all different kinds of people. Um, even on our own team, we have people from all over the world on our own team. So we were inspired from within and from without on that one. Uh, OK, thank you. Hi. Two very quick questions. OK, so back um, during the Uprising event, a lot of people really liked Gabriel Reyes's original voice. Is there even the slightest chance we might have like the Gabriel Reyes skin have that voice? Or is it just too hard? Um, I don't know that I can answer that question very well. So I know. Huh? So I'm, no, this isn't. I'm not being coy. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, this is a. This is. This is like we're always looking for cool stuff to slide into the game, um, but this is. This is. This is something that. Man, I don't we, know. We take yeah. feedback. Just if you tell love us, it, tell let us, us you know. want it. So. Yeah. Oh, and. Um, we really do. <laughs> um, and second question, can you make the dance emoticons um, available to purchase forever? Because I love them. We love that you guys love those so much. We love it. So I, like, we love those dance emotes, and we're excited to have them, too. Um, we want to collect them just like you guys do. So we, can, we feel your pain when it comes to that. Um, it's just we love being able to have these things that that people can look forward to and be excited for and stuff like that So and we don't want every item in the game to be collected by everyone all the time It's something that we we want people to to be able to like embrace a, One thing that really fits their personality, right? And those dance emotes those have a lot of personality mm. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, uh, well, um, 
Sorry. <laughs> Mercy Main here. Um, do you have any advice for people who want to become like aspiring game developers? Work very hard. Do a lot of art. <laughs> Simple enough. All right, thank you. <laughs> that's, honestly, that's it. It's just keep working. Uh, don't stop. You can do it. So my question is, are we ever going to have a fan art event? such as a competition amongst people voted by maybe the developers or the community itself, and then those skins are made into the game for everybody? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. So that, I, I think that's a cool idea, and I think that we're always looking for cool ideas. So there, it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I, we don't have anything to announce or anything right now, though. Okay. <laughs> Oh God, it's my turn. Um, so I guess this is kind of two questions. What kind of characters do you like to play? Like, do you like people like Lucio and Mercy as healers or people like Junkrat or Bastet? Uh, so for me personally, I'm always, you know when you're waiting in queue and everybody's like pick, pick, pick really quick and there's that one guy that's like waiting to see what everybody else picks, that's me. Uh, so I end up playing a lot of support and tank. <laughs> I actually really enjoy them, though. Uh, Reinhardt's super fun. Lucio is super fun. I almost always play support in some way. So I play a ton of uh, Zenyatta, and I play some Lucio, and I play some, uh, some. I play a lot of Symmetra. And um, I, but I also, like, I'm happy to flex into an assault role. I'm, terror I'm like, the one of the worst tanks ever, though. So I, whenever my Same. team it's all right, I got needs this. a tank, it's not me. It's a bad idea. And then one more question. Um, what are you guys' favorite maps? And can you see any new ones coming in the future that would be permanently added to the game? So uh, I think for me, my favorite map right now is the Oasis map. And it's for the reason that it's showing a hopeful future for a place that's not very hopeful right now. And I think it's super important for us to look at the future that way, and that map really embodies us. And plus, it's got jumps, so there's that. Uh, my favorite map is, this is a really hard question. Um, I, it's probably like Oasis or Eichenwald. Um, I love those maps like crazy. Um, as far as new maps, we just added three new maps to the game uh, a couple days ago. So we've got some cool arena maps, and you can play some cool new 3v3 modes in with those guys. So there's definitely, like, we're always working on new content. But yeah, you should check out those three new, those three new maps. They're real cool. First of all, I want to take a minute to thank you guys very much and all of Blizzard for being as exceptional as a company as you are. I have played many games at a top level that I have dropped because of a lack of communication with the developers, lack of interest in the community, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and everything that y'all do is absolutely fantastic and encourages me to play any game that Blizzard puts their hands on. Thank you. Secondly, you said earlier that you don't have to put out fires and the community generally pisleases itself. But as I'm sure you probably know, there are a lot of controversies surrounding delicate things that certain social media websites like to complain about, like May's character design at the beginning of the year or several characters' racial appearances at other events. When y'all see these kinds of things happen, do you go, let's just ignore it and let the community handle itself? Or do y'all go, if things get out of hand, we're going to give in and let them bully us into changing character designs? So this is a two-part question. Um, so we, we, um, we listen really, really hard to everything that the community says. So anytime the community has a problem or any type of concern, we are 100% all ears. Um, the, the way that we develop our characters and the way that we sort of develop our skins, and you can probably speak to this better than I can, um, we, we try really hard not to make any statements or do anything that is controversial in any way. It's not that we're avoiding it, it's just not something that we're going for. Um, the, the way that we the way that when those those types of situations are a, a, like a normal thing when people are connected to a game like Overwatch, and we really love the fact that 
over the Overwatch community is so connected to the game that they feel emotional about it. So we try really hard to be sensitive to that, but we definitely don't um, go out of our way to um, like stoke the fire or um, like change our design based on that stuff. If I can speak for the entire community as a whole, don't let the very loud minority ever affect the happiness of the quiet majority. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Thanks. Now, I know I can't speak for the community as a whole, but I think we're all pretty big fans of Terry Crews, especially in the realm of voice acting. So I was just wondering if anybody at Blizzard is also a fan of Terry Crews. We think Terry is very talented, He's and we fantastic. love his enthusiasm. Thank you. Hi. Uh, with all the great lore that each character has and such like amazing backstories, is it possible that in the future we might see a sort of single-player campaign that sort of expands on those lore? We're constantly trying new things, trying out new stuff. But again, we don't have anything to announce today on that, but uh, keep coming up with the suggestions, keep posting about them on the forums, tell us what you want to see, we listen. I read Reddit every day. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yep. Thanks, man. Hello. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, when the uh, last event ended, I missed the one skin that I really wanted to get from it, which was Blackwatch Genji. And I'm kind of bummed out about that. And then I saw that they're making a new Lucio skin, and he's my main, and he's my... I really, really want to get that skin, but I'm afraid that I'm going to uh, miss out on it again before the event ends. The event ends. So I was wondering if you guys maybe ever thought of, uh, other than just making the events come back, if you maybe thought about having like a rare item that you could put in every other event that's like a voucher for you to get a skin from a previous event? That's an interesting way to handle that that suggestion. That's a good idea. Yeah, I think we've had those ideas. I th like we have the system in place um, that we do uh, for a reason, and we haven't we we don't have any plans to stray from it right now. Um, but we do. We think it's great. We love all the skins <laughs> out there too, and we on staff are constantly missing skins, just like the rest that of them. Skin. Yeah, so it, 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 we feel you, it, but it's. We also, I also love, like the skins that I love, I try really hard to, to uh, make sure that I have and so that I can love them forever. Thank you so much. Oh boy. <laughs> um, this is more of a suggestion than a question. Just cool. I think it would be kind of funny to do, do like a, a, a voiceover swap. So you have like uh, Rain, uh, Reinhardt gang saying like winky face. I think that would be great. That's pretty hilarious. That needs to be added as like an event or something. I've heard that Reinhardt voice actor doing that <laughs> in reality. Yes. And it's pretty funny, let me tell you. Like, you know, we could have like, uh, have Mercy saying, you know, Reapers die, die, die because it's the exact opposite. It would be great. Sounds hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say Symmetra is not overpowered. Her beam range is tiny. Her beam range is tiny. Just walk away from her and get on the payload for once. Anyways. Uh, all right. Let's. What's your question? Loud and clear. In your opinions, uh, what would you say in the game is the uh, character in the worst state of balance, whether they're too powerful or too underpowered, who would you say is the worst balance at the moment? And even, not even by that much, but who is? Well, neither of us are balance designers. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not sure if they're... I mean, I have, just like everybody, right? Like, I have characters that I have trouble defeating, but I think that the thing that is... Um, this is what we always say on social media whenever anyone asks, like, why don't you nerf so-and-so? We always sort of give the, the, the answer that there's a lot... The way that Overwatch is designed, it's designed for you to swap out characters if you're having problems with an enemy, right? So if there's an overpowered... If there's a Bastion that you feel is overpowered on the other team, there are characters that you should swap into to try and counter that Bastion. Um, and that's, that's like a fundamental part of our game is that we want to make sure that... Uh, you are constant. Like the teams are dynamic in order to counter the other team. So that is uh, that's that's always our answer. Thank you. I think we got time for 
One more. Hey. Sorry, guys. I just want to say congratulations for this first year. I enjoy Overwatch a lot, and I will always enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, okay, here's my here's my two questions. Um, one. <laughs> sorry. Are are you planning on adding any new skins for any previous events? Um, I, I, I don't think that we have an answer for you right now. I think that this is a sort of a wait and see situation. Um, it's not <laughs> that we're trying to hide anything or do anything like that. This is just where we we want you guys to um, to have some cool upcoming experiences. We're making more cool stuff. Don't worry, it's coming. All right, <laughs> two. Do you actually enjoy your job as a creator? Can I use the F word? Fuck yeah. Seriously, it, yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, That's, I'm, it's, I can't say it, the word dream job enough, honestly. I've been yep. doing it for seven years. I go to work every day and say, I'm gonna make explosions today. Like, it's the coolest thing. That, I, I make funny jokes on the internet, and so I like my job a lot. I work with some of the <laughs> coolest people in the world, and I get to be a part of the, perhaps the coolest uh, gaming community that I could have ever imagined. So yes, I love my job very much. All right. So Thanks. I think that's it, guys. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. out. We love you guys. Thanks for being the coolest.